Let me 
worship him. Come on, you're in a house of miracles this morning. Come on, let's give Jesus our best praise in this place. I'm reminded of a story in Ezekiel where God, he, he brought the prophet Ezekiel to a valley of dry bones, dead bones, empty bones, dry bones. And he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you alone know these bones can live. He told Ezekiel, he said, prophesy to these bones and I will breathe life into them. And I wonder how many people in this room need Jesus to breathe life into your situation this morning, your marriage this morning, your family this morning, the prodigal sons and daughters this morning. He can breathe life into your story this morning. So let's sing that again. And we're going to believe that he is the God of miracles. Come on, let's lift those hands. He's the God of miracles in this place. Amen, amen. Wow, what a time of worship. Well, hey, before you are seated, turn somebody and tell them, say, you're in a house of miracles this morning, and then you can be seated. Amen, you can be seated in this place. Well, before we go any further, we want to take time and honor anyone that may be here for the very first time this morning. So if you're, this is your first time, we want to take the, a second and just honor you. So come on, let's let all of our first time guests know how much we love them, we honor them. We, we're so excited that they're here. Amen, amen. Well, hey, we've got a few announcements for you through video. So if you will, take a few seconds and pay attention to the screen this morning. Good morning, my name is Katie and I'm a life group leader at River of Life. We are so excited to welcome you to church today. This morning, our hope is that you know God more and experience a fresh connection with Him. We wanna connect with you. Please text ROL Next Steps to 97000 or fill out a VIP card in the seat back in front of you. Check out these events that we have coming up this month. Everyone needs community. Here at River of Life, we grow together through life groups. Our fall semester life groups kick off on September 13th. We know that this is going to be the best semester yet because we believe that life change happens in the context of relationships. Registration launches this Wednesday at rolhamilton.org. First Wednesday is this Wednesday, September 1st at 7 p.m. We'll have extended worship, communion, and an inspiring word. We can't wait to see you there. Yesterday, we wrapped up our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We want you to know that our church is built on prayer. Join us this Saturday, September 4th, for First Saturday Prayer. We'll come together for corporate worship and prayer over our church, our community, and our nation. It's only one hour from 9 to 10 a.m. Second Saturday Serve is every month. This is how we go out into our community and make a difference. By choosing different projects inside of our county and blessing people in need. Want to get involved? You can visit rolhamilton.org slash outreach. Today, all of your giving toward missions will go to Samaritan's Purse. Check out this video to see all of the great things this organization is doing to provide relief to the devastation in Haiti. This Chinook helicopter has just landed here in Lakai. Right now behind me, they're offloading supplies. They brought in our emergency field hospital where we will set up a 36 bed unit to provide critical care, orthopedic surgeries, trauma surgeries. Samaritan's Purse would like to thank the U.S. Army Southcom and USAID for this fast and critical response of bringing our emergency field hospital 
from Port-au-Prince, where our DC-8 cargo plane arrived, out to Lakai, which is one of the hardest hit areas. There's additional need as a result of earthquake injuries, broken bones, trauma. Samaritan's Purse is on the ground to bring relief in Jesus' name. If you want any more information about any of the things that we've mentioned today, you can text ROL Next Steps to 97000 to connect with us. We're so glad that you decided to worship with us today. Pastor Dan is wrapping up his series on the School of Prayer. We hope you enjoy the message. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you in the Lord's house today. We're so thankful that you're here today. I believe that God has some great and mighty things in store for us. We're going to pray and we want to let you know that um, your, your giving, your generosity today again outside of tithe will go if you mark it on your tithe envelope or if you give uh, through the digital way, you can uh, let us know, mark it missions and your money will go to Samaritan Purse. We are in partnership with them and we're going to help the, the people of Haiti. They desperately need our help. And I want us to partner together. I want us to come together and I want us to help these people. We, most likely we cannot go there but there is a ministry that can get there, will be there, is there, and we're going to help these people, and we want to see them rebuild. We want them to come back stronger than ever before. River of Life, you're a very generous church. You make a difference. You give, and you bless, and you make sure people's lives are touched and forever transformed, forever, forever brought to the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't underestimate what you give because we're not the only church giving. We're giving with so many other churches and it's making a difference today. So thank you for your giving and make sure that you give into the missions today because we want to be a blessing to the people of Haiti. It will go. It won't be spent on anything else but to make sure those people are rescued, those people are fed, they're clothed, they have shelter for them. That is our responsibility as a church, as the people, and we're going to do it. Amen? We're going to pray today also for the people of Afghanistan. We're going to pray for that country, those people there today. I don't really care about your political opinion and view about what you think there, and we're going to pray. I'm not called to curse. I'm called to bless. Amen? And we're going to pray for those precious people of Afghanistan and Lord knows they need, they need to know who Jesus Christ is. There are believers there, and they are being persecuted for their faith, even being executed for their faith. And so we're going to pray for them and ask God to be with them. We're going to pray for our troops today. We're going to pray for the United States military, as I understand. Marines are there, Army Rangers are there, and I'm sure others are being placed there. I do know that. Uh, two people from Harris County that we know, I won't mention their name, but many of you would know their names. They're young men from the county. They are there. They are, they're boots on the ground right there in Afghanistan, and I'm sure that you know probably someone that is there. So we're going to pray for them and ask the Lord's protection. Pray for the families that lost those 13 Marines there. We pray for their family. They did pay the ultimate sacrifice to not only protect us they were there also protecting other people and they're right in the midst of a very hostile situation but hey I'm not getting my news from everybody else I see the news but I'm going to call on the I'm going to call on the God that can change everything and the God who knows what's going on and the God that is at work anybody believe that today God is still on the throne today he's working he's working today praying for those that have COVID we have a lot of folks that are unable to be here, whether, again, they've been around somebody with COVID. We do have people in the church that has COVID that are very sick, but we're praying for them that the Lord will heal them. And we're going to keep pressing on. Anybody still just pressing on and believing that God, and my message today, I pray that the message will stir you and increase your faith and that the Lord will speak in a powerful way today. Join with me in prayer. Father, I Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you've given us and you bring us into the house of God, the house of prayer that turns into the house of miracles. And I pray today, Lord, that you will just speak to us. And Lord, we just, God, we need you. I'm praying. I'm not trying to rush. I'm not trying to pray eloquent. Lord, I'm desperate. Lord, we ought to be in this room right now crying out to you. 
We ought to be praying to you, Lord, in an audible voice. I know we like to be low-key, but God, we are, we are a nation here in this place that we need. We need your touch. We need to repent of our own sins, God. Lord, so that you can forgive us and then heal our land. Lord, we pray for the troops that are there in Afghanistan. God, be with them. Lord, we've already lost 13. God, 13 that have been lost, families that are grieving. But they knew. They knew when they went there what they have to do. They understand that the ultimate sacrifice may have to be paid. So, God, we just pray for those families. We pray for all those other troops that are there. Lord, we just pray that we can get in there, do what needs to be done, and then get out, Lord. I don't know how everything needs to work out. I just know that you're going to work it out, God. I put my trust in you. I don't lean to my own understanding. I don't lean to Fox News' understanding, CNN's understanding. Lord, we trust in you. We call on your name today, God. Lord, there's people in Haiti that are suffering greatly. We pray for them, Lord. Help us to help them and to rebuild and to bring them back, God. We cover them in our prayers today, Lord. We pray over them, God, for their rescue, for their rebuilding to be brought back because we know that they're without food and shelter and clothing. But even, God, the mental anguish, the spiritual attack, the, the evil that is there, the witchcraft that is practiced there in, in a lot of the places there. We know that there is a battle for Haiti, God, but we know there's churches there and ministries that are there. And Lord, we are partnering with these ministries, God, to do great things, Lord. And God, we believe revival will come there and restoration to the people of Haiti. Lord, I pray for people that are battling with COVID. Will you help me pray, folks? Just lean in and pray. we got to pray for people in, in the, this nation, in the world, that are dealing with COVID. And God, we just pray this stuff go away. God, that you'll speak your word. You'll breathe, Holy Spirit. And this thing will leave. This thing will leave as reports come in, people struggling with it. God, we pray in hospitals right now, in ICU units right now, Lord, that people will come off the ventilator, God. People will, will come alive as we sing about come alive in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak that. Families who have already lost loved ones, God, they've been devastated by it, Lord, because of this, this disease, Lord, this, this virus and whatever and however it got here, God. Lord, it has taken lives and enough is enough. And, and those that are suffering of the loss and grieving the loss, comfort them, Holy Spirit. I pray comfort them and give them peace that surpasses all understanding. But, oh, God, we've got people in our church that's, they have cancer, God, and they're going through chemo treatment. And, Lord, it's not COVID. It's cancer. If it's not cancer, it's, a, it's heart issues. If it's not that, it's, it's spiritual and mental warfare going on, depression and panic and anxiety. And, God, I pray for a release right now of this and heal the people in Jesus' name. As I teach and preach your word today in the authority of the Holy Spirit, God, let your word go forth. Lord, let it go forth and powerful according to Psalm 107, verse 20. And you sent your word and healed them. Let your word work today, God, and bless your people in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Take your Bibles, if you will, and go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. The Bible tells us, beginning around verse 12, it tells us that Jesus entered the courts and, and he went in and he drove out people that were buying and selling. They, they turned the place into a, into a storefront. It really became like a, a Walmart. And they were just treating the place disrespectfully. And Jesus enters in and when he gets there, he sees it and he turns the tables over and he takes the cages and lets the doves out because the priests were selling the doves at a, at a high price and was just really just taking advantage of the people. And he said in verse 13, he said this, it is written, meaning it's in the word of God. He's quoting Isaiah, the prophet from Isaiah 56. And he said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Everybody say a house of prayer. My house Listen, this ain't your house, and this is not my house. This is his house. This is his house today. We ought to treat it with such. This is the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You've become robbers, and you, you're exploiting the people, but my house shall be called a house of prayer. And once he got all of that stuff out of the way and 
people that were abusing it and people turning it into a place of merchandising. And he said, the blind and the lame, it says, they were able to come in at the temple and he healed them. That tells me they couldn't get in. They couldn't get in because of all the riffraff going on, all of the stuff going on, all of the uh, programs that we've turned it into. And now they weren't able to get in. I'm telling you, this church is still for the lame and the blind folk. Amen. This church is still for hurting and hopeless people today. And so he uh, healed them. They saw it, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and they saw the wonderful things he did. And the children began to worship God. How many wants to see wonderful things again? Anybody want to see the wonderful things of God? Anybody want to see the Spirit of God move in a powerful way? Now, if you sit on me, I'll drag this thing out for an hour and a half. I can. I know what you Well, I can get up and leave. Well, you leave, I stay. This is a house of prayer. I want to see a move of God. We need to see the Spirit of the Lord to move. And we're going to pray. Mark wrote it out this way when he talked about what Jesus said here. And he gave us the description of this. And he said, Jesus said, this shall be called the house of prayer for the nations. We're going to pray for nations today. We pray for Haiti. We pray for Afghanistan. We pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the United States of America. Our nation needs to be covered in prayer today. We pray for persecuted Christians. Church, listen to me. Do not forget they are people being persecuted for their faith right now. You came to church today easy, comfortably. You're here right now. No one said, I dare you to enter in here. If you walk in there, you, you will be beheaded for your faith. That has not happened as of yet in America. We ought to thank God that he has blessed us, but we ought to pray for the persecuted Christians today. Churches are what is called underground. That means they have to do church secretly. They have to hide out. They cannot be caught having church and be found worshiping and praying. My prayer this week has been, Lord, bring the underground church to above ground. Raise up the church so the church will be the strongest and the most important institution found anywhere in the land. We need to see the church above ground, amen, all around the world today. See, as we pray for our nations and we pray for this nation today, if only we were as passionate about prayer as we are about our politics, I believe our nation would be rocked almost overnight and our own lives would be transformed when we pray together and pray as people of God. And in Exodus chapter 33, the Bible gives us the story of that Moses leading the children of Israel. And the children of Israel had sinned. They had, they had created a, an idol out of making out of the out of the gold and the silver, the earrings and, and, and the bracelets of the people, the jewelry of the people. And some way and somehow they have made a golden calf. And this was idolatry. And God was very displeased. The old language is that he was sorely displeased with the children of Israel. And he had removed his presence. See, his presence in that time was, was known and seen as a pillar of cloud, a cloud like a pillar of cloud. And they knew that was God, and that, that, that pillar of cloud would lead them by day and a fire by night. And that was, the, that, that was the tangible presence of God in those days. And so we see here that God has removed himself from the camp where the people of Israel dwelt. And Moses knows that God is, he's, he's moved away and, and so the Bible tells us in Exodus 33 and verse 7, it says, Now Moses took his tent and he pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and he called it the tabernacle of meeting. Another translation of that is the tent of meeting. Now if you do any type of study in the Old Testament, you will hear a lot about the tabernacle or the tent of meeting. And that is where they went to worship God. But this is not the tabernacle that you read mostly about where they would go in and they would stop by the, the place where they would wash their hands and the, and the brazen altar and the, and the candlestick of representing the Spirit of God and the places of sacrifice and the Ark of the Covenant and going into the, the most holy place. That would come later. But this is the 
first part of the, uh, uh, like a portable tent of meeting. You, you, could, you could move it from here to there. And mo- it wasn't elaborate. It wasn't nothing fancy. It, was nothing, it wasn't nothing cool about it. It was just a portable tent, and, uh, and he would move it. And the Bible said that he moved it far from the camp. He got it out of the place where they had desecrated the camp because of their idolatry. And he moved it away, and he, and he pitched it at this place. And there is where he would go and meet with God. And the Bible says there that in verse, uh, uh, verse 8, Moses uh, went out to the tent, and all the people would rise up and stand at the entrance there of their tents, and they would watch Moses until he entered the tent. You see, this was the call that, that if anyone inquired of the Lord, they could go to this tent of meeting. But it, it's written in the context that not many ever went down seeking the Lord. They all kind of stayed back, and they kept their distance. But Moses would go down, and he would meet with the Lord there, and they would watch him from their home, if you will, the, the front door of their tents, and they would see Moses. And Moses went in. The Bible said that as he stood there, all of a sudden the, that pillar of cloud descended and it stood there and it stood at the door of the tent of meeting and the Lord talked with Moses. He talked with him like you would talk with a friend face to face, the Bible says. But the people saw it, but they worshiped from afar. They, 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 they kept their distance. And see what Moses was trying to teach them because of the desecration in the camp He moved the tent of meeting. He he established this place. And if you want to meet and you want to encounter the presence of God, you're going to have to leave the place of desecration and you've got to consecrate yourself to the Lord. You've got to want to go to where God is. You've got to have a desire in your life to, to, to go after the presence of the Lord. And see, you can't just stay where you're at. You can't stay in the noise. And you can't stay where the hustle and the bustle and the rat race is. You just can't stay where you're distracted in the noise of life. You've got to be willing to get up. And you've got to be willing to want to go into the place where God is. You see, prayer is, as Dina Rizzo said in our 21 days of prayer, prayer is the secret sauce of the church. Amen. Prayer is the secret sauce of your marriage. Prayer is the secret sauce for your parenting. Prayer is the secret sauce of changing the world today. We must be a house of prayer. We must want to go into the tent of meeting and we want to go after the presence of God. You see, Moses understood that to have the presence of God, you must have a place of prayer. If you want the presence of God, you've got to have a place of prayer. You must get after God. You see, Jesus had a place of prayer. He he ministered to people. He healed people. He set people free. But he would have to withdraw from the crowd. And he would have to get along with the Lord. The Bible said he would get up early in the morning, way early in the morning. And he would find that solitary place. And he would enter into the presence of God. And he would pray. And he he would get the will of the Father for the day. You see, Jesus understood that if you don't make any deposit in the bank of prayer, you can't write any checks all day long as he was ministering and healing of people. You see, if you do that, your checks will bounce if there's nothing in the bank. Some of you right now, you may be writing some bad checks because you have nothing in the bank. Our problem is we write checks, but we don't make any deposits into the prayer bank. Folks, if you want to see God answer prayer, you got to pray. You got to deposit in the prayer bank today. You got to put something in if you're going to get back from the Lord. Jesus, he had the time to pray before he had the time to minister. We got to take time to pray. You see, revival, revival comes from praying, folks. When you study, when you study any revival historically and you do the research, and I would, I would ask you to do that. You ought to go and, and study how great revivals happened. How did they take place? Revivals took place because people prayed. People sought the Lord. People went after God. You go as far back to the Great Awakening with George Whitfield in the 1700s. And you go there and you experience that. And you study the research of that. It was because a man got down and he prayed to God. John Huss was a man that prayed. He prayed, and a great revival came. These men were the the people that were even before 
Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a monk, just a monk. Nobody knew him. And he prayed. He prayed uh, desperately. And, and he was so intense in his prayer, seeking out for God. And the Lord spoke to that monk in a faraway place that nobody knew and stirred him up and, and challenged him that we don't get to God by works. We get to God through the, through the grace of Jesus Christ and by faith in Jesus. And that's where he nails those, those theses on the wall of the Wittenberg Church in Germany. And it was there that not just a revival came, but a reformation came to the church because one man prayed his way into what God was saying. You see, I used to get upset when we would call for prayer time and prayer meetings. And, and first Saturday prayer. I want to tell you, if you ever come to first Saturday prayer, there won't be this many people at first Saturday prayer. First Saturday prayer, just a handful of folks. But see, I used to get disturbed about that. I used to get bothered by it. But I have learned over the years, it doesn't take a lot of people. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'm in the midst of them. There 21 days of prayer, just a few of us were here. First Saturday prayers or this 21 days of where we met on Saturday. Just a few of us. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot of stuff. But I want to tell you, you're sitting in chairs today that are covered in prayer. You walked into a sanctuary that's been covered and smothered in prayer today. And though you never even thought about it, there were some of us that were not only thinking about it, we were praying about it. Amen. And I want to tell you, if you get a miracle today, you can thank a prayer warrior and you can thank the God of heaven who answers prayers today because we believe in prayer. Revival only comes from prayer. Revival is birth in the spirit of prayer today. We must pray. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but there's a thing called a global pandemic going on. Anybody heard of that lately? A global pandemic. There's a global pandemic that's taking place, but I'm praying that this global pandemic will turn into a global revival. Amen. I pray that God will give us a, a praying spirit today. You need a praying spirit in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I was reading over there the other day. I did a devotion for International Friendship Ministries and, and for Ron and Carol Collins. And I was there and, and, and I'd come across this word. And man, it has is, it is stirred my heart and it's on my heart. And I've been praying this. It tells us there that in verses 3, even if our gospel is hid or if it's veiled, it's hidden to those who are perishing. Because it's the minds of the 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 the, the, the minds of the, the God the mind of the God of this age has blinded their minds and he he's 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 troubled them and he's deceived them and they don't believe. Now watch this. The Bible tells us there. Let me find it right here. I want to read it out of this. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that's on display through the glory of Christ, who's the image of God. And it goes on to tell us that, that God, in verse 6, has commanded light to shine out of darkness today. God has commanded light. When he spoke the world into existence, he called this world was full of darkness. I feel like we're full of darkness today. Everything evil is going on. Everything wicked is going on. But God commands light to come out of darkness today. He has the power. The Bible goes on to say, He made the light to shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. My prayer, listen, if you don't know how to pray, pray Scripture. Pray Scripture. You get in the Bible, you can have a revival. Amen? That's what you got to do. And you pray the Scripture. And I've been praying that Scripture to say, God, let light shine in this darkest hour that we're facing. What we're going, what's going on. And people, people are about to lose their mind. I talked with somebody yesterday, and she said every morning she's stricken by fear and anxiety and panic. And she said every day I wake up, I just say, what's next? What's coming next? I'm telling you, people are looking, people are searching, people. The other day, during the afternoon, they stopped by and said, Pastor, there's somebody here in the church. He, he stopped by. He's, he wanted to pray. He just came and sat in the sanctuary. He was praying. Somebody else stopped by during 21 days of prayer. I don't know who it was. Stopped by. I believe Pastor Brett prayed with them. Somebody called the office and said, what in the world's going on over there at that church every morning, that early in the morning? What are you doing? We're praying. People want to know what's happening. 
People need a praying church today. We are going to be a praying church. We're going to pray for a revival, for the light to shine out of the darkness. I love verse 15. And it's all this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. I want to see a revival, church, here at River of Life that people are experiencing more and more of the grace of God. More and more people are coming to Jesus Christ. When COVID gets out of our way, let me tell you, this house is going to be packed. Two services. We may even have to go to three because people are hungering and thirsting after God today. Amen. You got to believe that. You're in a life group. You're a life group leader. I challenge you to lead prayer. Pray. I don't care what, you, what your group is. I know some are studying a, a curriculum. Others are getting together and playing a sport. I think we got one coming up with swing dancing, don't we? Some kind of, uh, some kind of dancing. Hey, dance away. But pray, pray, pray. I don't care what you're doing as long as it doesn't uh, bring a, an approach to the church. But we ought to, we ought to pray. You got to get together and pray, pray, lay hands on one another and pray for the people to be touched and people to be healed. Pray. Let me talk to you about effective prayer. Effective prayer in James chapter 5 tells us this. And James really just gives us a great teaching on prayer there. And when we learn how to pray and we get down to business and prayer, he, he, he says this in verse 13. He says, is anyone among you in trouble? Is anybody in trouble today? Anybody got any trouble in your life? I think everybody in this room has got some kind of trouble going on. Raise your hand if you got some kind of trouble going on in your life. All right? You got trouble in your life, what do you do? Well, you're going to panic. I'm going to quit. I'm going to throw in the towel. No, he said if you're in trouble, pray. Everybody say pray. If you're in trouble, pray. If you're in trouble, pray. Whatever you're facing, pray. Call out on God, pray. Seek the Lord, pray. If you're, that, that another language there is if you're afflicted, meaning somebody's afflicting you, when somebody's coming after you, when somebody is lying about you, when somebody's gossiping about you. There was another person that shared with me last Sunday about going back to their job, and they were going back into a very difficult situation and it was going to and it was all against this person it was all against her and 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 she was sharing that with us and said it's a battle and I don't know what to expect she had been out of work due to the COVID and things like that and she was facing a challenging situation she texted yesterday I believe it was and she she told how that that when she went back she didn't know what to expect but through last Sunday's message about prayer and how God answers prayer that she went in there with prayer and she went in there with her faith and let me tell you, the Lord just started opening doors for her, and she shared her faith with people, and she prayed with people. I want to tell you, prayer works. If you're in trouble, pray. If you got a, if you got somebody against you, pray. If affliction's coming, if suffering is coming, pray, pray, pray. God answers prayer. Amen? Just keep on praying. Keep on praying. I love the next part of that. The next part says, is anybody happy? Is anybody happy anymore? Come on, there's some folks. I'm telling you, if you're happy and you know it, let your face show it. Come on, somebody. Come on, happy. If you're happy, what you do is you're to sing praise to God. Amen? If you're happy, you ought to take that moment and praise God because see where it's stuck between? It's stuck between trouble and sickness. And when you're going to have times you're going to be happy, you need to, take the, you need to take advantage of that and you need to worship like you never worshiped God before because you're in between trouble. And the next verse says, is anyone among you sick? Sick with COVID? Sick with cancer? Sick with diabetes? Sick, sick with diverticulitis? Sick, sick with migraines? Sick? Are you sick with, with an ailment in your body today? If you are sick, watch this. Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. If you're sick, call on the elders. Who is that? That's the mature believers of the church. That's the people that can pray. That's people that's been through the storm. That's people that's tested, had their faith tested, and they've come through victorious. That's who you need to get around you when you are sick. You need to get people that know how to pray. 
Now, I know there are those who say they don't believe in healing for today. I know there's people who say, well, you know, and you may have come from a church where they even taught that miracles and healings went away, went away when the apostles died in the first century. Now, I want to tell you that is not correct teaching. And if you come from that and if you believe that, you are in error because that is not correct. Because in 1 Corinthians, it tells us about the gifts of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit are wisdom and knowledge and faith and and prophecy and discerning of spirits. And then it talks about miracles and healings. And it goes on to talk about other things like speaking with other tongues and interpretation of tongues. Well, if you take out and say that miracles and healings have left, then that means that the that the gifts of the Spirit are not there. So if you take that out, you got to take you can't get wisdom, you can't get knowledge. You'll never be able to have the faith that you need. You'll never be able to discern anything. So you're going to be always living in the dark and, and, and everything just keeping you deceived. No, I want to tell you. Healing and miracles have not went away with the death of the apostles. The healing and miracles is still for the 21st century church today. If you're sick, you need to call for somebody that knows how to pray the prayer of faith and believe for you for your healing today. But here's the problem. I know what many people believe. Well, I've seen so many weird things happen in church. And I've seen the fake And I've seen hypocrisy in all of it. And I know how it works. And and I have too, folks. I've seen preachers on TV. They have gotten up and they have preached a scam. And they they have ripped people off. And they said, if you'll write this big amount of check and send it to me. Now, if you're in that, hey, come on, send it to me too. But I ain't going to guarantee you nothing, all right? But they will will tell you to send it to me. And the Lord will send healing to you. Now, I believe that there is acts of faith. I believe that you could, if you have the faith to believe, but you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful of people that will will attack you in that way, and and they will use you and abuse you. And we've seen that through through what is called televangelists or prosperity gospel preachers, and they'll, they'll use that a lot of times. However, on the other end of the spectrum, there is the mainline churches that they, they don't believe and they think everything is dead and gone. With the, like I said, the apostles and, and God doesn't heal anymore and, and, and he doesn't give miracles. And so they teach against it and they come against it. And, and so all of the fake, all of the hypocrisy, all of the weird. And so what happens is, is people stop believing and they think it's over. And they say, well, I've seen them hypocrites and fake people. Well, you don't stop going to Walmart because of fake people, do you? You don't stop going to Publix, do you, but, and, and, and ordering up your groceries because, because, they're, because I can guarantee if you go there, you're going to run in some fake, weird, uh, 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 hypocritical people. The person checking you out, how do you know who they are? You don't, you don't know if they didn't add a little to your ticket. You don't know that. There's fakes everywhere. But I want to tell you, you don't boycott that, do you? I'm not going to boycott healing i'm not going to boycott signs and wonders i'm still going to believe in the word of god that there is nothing too hard for the lord to do today amen god can do this god can do this today and so when you look at this and you break it down prayer of faith watch this verse 15 in the prayer offered in faith it'll make the sick person well and the lord watch this and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the lord will raise him up You see, when you're down and out and you're sick in body, you may not feel like praying. When you're going through a storm and you're troubled, you may not feel like you can pray. You you may feel like, I I, I just, there's no way. I've been there so sick, you, you, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to talk. You can't even get out of the bed. You can't pray. I think about people who are going through these treatments for cancer and things like that and they're nauseous and they're weakened and they just they, they're losing their hair and, and everything's going on physically and psychologically and they they don't even have a they can't even utter a prayer and see the bible says something here. i want you to learn something right here the prayer of faith is not of the sick person did you hear that the prayer of faith is not of the sick person it is the faith of the praying people that's what the bible teaches the prayer offered in faith 
will make that person sick well. That, that person can be healed, but it's not their prayers. It's the prayer of the elders. It's the prayers of the mature people. If your faith is down, you need to get mature believers around your life to pray over you. So if you're low, they're on a high anyway spiritually. They can help you today. And we're going to pray for people today. You said, I, I'm going through the worst I've got this sickness. I'm fearful. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm telling you, praying people are ready to pray for you today. A lot of times, people will quit church and say, well, nobody checked on me. Nobody, nobody called me. I was sick and nobody reached out to me. No, that's not how the Scripture teaches. If you are sick, you have to do the calling. You have to call. For the elders of the church, mature believers that are intercessors and they get in the gap for you and they intercede on your behalf and they pray for you. Now watch this. The Bible says that the prayer that is offered in faith, that prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, it saves the sick. But see, there's so many people that think, if I can just have prayer from PD, if PD would just lay hands on me, if, if, if Pastor Jerry, I, I just, oh, Pastor Jerry's the guy that I want praying for me. If I could just get that, that TV preacher to, to lay hands on me or, 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 or whatever to pray over me, then I'll be healed. That'll work. No, no. It, none of, nobody heals. Matter of fact, it says we are to anoint people with oil. There's no magic in that. Some people say, why are you putting oil on me? It's what James said because it's, it's, it's the teaching of symbolic presence of God. That's all that is. There's no, there's no healing in the oil. And there's no healing in PD or your favorite preacher. It says, and Jesus raised them up. Jesus is the healer of all diseases. So, so if you get on this big kick and, and you got your favorite preacher, boy, they're healing and they're doing, no, they're not healing anybody. They're, they're operating in a gift of healing, but it's Jesus Christ who does the healing. Amen? Watch this. James goes on to teach us about prayer. Verse 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Confess your trespasses. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. See, sometimes you're sick because of sin. Not all the time, but sometimes you're sick because of sin. Sin can make you sick. Sin will never, ever bless you. Sin will never, ever make you better. It'll make you sick. Now, but not everybody who's sick doesn't mean they've sinned. So don't fall for that either. Okay? You may just be sick because you got around somebody else who was sick and you caught what they had. You may be sick because there's just something in your body that's went haywire and it's called cancer. It's not that God doesn't love you or you're a bad person. It's just this thing called being a human being and living in a fallen world today. But it's the prayer. It's the prayer of a, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Prayer works today, guys. The effective, fervent prayer of righteous people avails much. And so he says this. He says in verse 17, Elijah, everybody say Elijah. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. I am so glad that's in the Bible. The NIV translated like this, that he was a human being just like us. A human being. He is no super duper, big time, whatever you want to think. He was close to God. He loved God. He was called by God. But he had the same like nature. Emotions, feelings, even as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. See, I like the last part of that prayer when he prayed and it did rain. But see, when you grow in prayer and you get closer to God in prayer, you'll start praying according to the will of God. That God may say, I want you to pray for a famine. Oh, Lord, open up the floodgates of heaven, pour out us a blessing. But sometimes God says, pray a famine over that person. Pray a famine over that land. Because I have learned this, that God has to use very hard things to break through very hard hearts. Our hearts have hardened in America and in this world. I believe we're as vile as we've ever been in humanity. 
We are so steeped and so deep in sin today that God has to hit us hard, real hard, to get our attention. He has to turn up the heat in the kitchen to get our attention. Anybody hear what I'm saying right now? That God has to shake us to get our attention. Because we're not even willing to get up and go to a prayer meeting. But God has to shake us and grab a hold of our our minds and the stories like this in Elijah's life. Elijah had prayed and and he had went before God and he had prayed. He He was at a showdown of God's against those prophets of Baal, the false god Baal, and they were all there. And he said, somebody's got to, today's the day. The, the God, the, the real, the true God has got to show up today. Either it's my God or your God. But one's going down and one's going to exist and, and remain and be the true and living God. The prophets danced. They cut themselves. They did all this stuff for hours. And they, they did all of these things and asking their God to come down and, and answer. But that God never showed up and he never answered because he does not exist. So Elijah got out and he dug a trench around there and he put the, uh, 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 poured water uh, barrels of water till it was full of the uh, the trenches were full of water he laid the sacrifice on the altar he took more water he drenched the sacrifice and he looked up to God and he prayed a few sentences and basically said Lord answer me Lord answer me and show these people that you're the true and the living God so that they will turn their hearts to you after he finished that prayer the Bible says that God answered him by fire fire fell it consumed the sacrifice it brought the sacrifice it was no more it it, it quenched the water that was in the trenches there was nothing left God answered by fire that day what a great victory they took those 450 prophets of Baal they took them out and executed them because that's what God said do and there was victory for the people of Israel and God had answered by fire don't you like that God amen the God who answers by fire fire but King Ahab the most wicked king of Israel dirty, filthy, low down, no good for nothing and here this king he, he, he was a weak leader, his wife ran everything Jezebel that's true, I'm not making fun of women it's just the truth right there because when you study it you can read the last books in the Bible the book of Revelation and it's not the spirit of Ahab it's the spirit of Jezebel because she was a terrorist. She terrorized and she manipulated and intimidated. And she got word out by a messenger said, You go tell Elijah. He's killed our prophets. I'm going to do the same thing for, to him on this day. A messenger showed up and said, Elijah, Jezebel's a little bothered by you. She's giving out this verdict. She says that she is hunting you down. And when she arrests you, you're not going to jail. You're going to be executed. She's going to tear you apart. And Elijah didn't look up. He didn't pray for the God that answers by fire. The Bible said he started running. And he was running. And his servants were with him. And he gets to a place and said, leave me alone. I'm getting out of here. I don't want any kind of hint. I don't want no, anybody to know where I'm at. The Bible said that he ran for a day's journey into the wilderness. That's not where you want to go, church, is into the desert, to the wilderness. He ran there. He was exhausted. He's given up. He's lying there under a juniper tree. And he's laying there, and as he's sitting there, he gets so depressed. He says, Lord, I wish you would answer this prayer. Take my life today. Take my life. I don't want to live anymore. Somebody may be in this room right now. You feel the same way. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I can't do it anymore. I believe in God, but I just can't make it. I just wish God would take me out of here. That's what he prayed. He became depressed and suicidal. He's lying there. The Lord came, fixed him a little meal, brought him a little Chick-fil-A, got him there and got that Polynesian sauce and, and revived him up right there. Amen. Brought him back, got him up on his feet, said, Elisha, you can't be like this. Elisha kind of got back to his cell. Says he went on the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. He journeyed till he got to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. When he found himself at the mountain of God, he went there. But what's so unusual, he didn't go to the top of the mountain. He found a cave. He hid out in a dark, cold, dingy cave. He gave up, depressed, depleted again. He's lying there in that dark cave, drowning in his sorrows, in his depression, giving up. But God still showed up. You might be giving up, but God will still show up. Amen. I don't care how low you are right now. 
I don't care what you feel or what you don't feel. God will still show up. God showed up and he called out to Elijah. He said, Elijah, what are you doing in this cave? God's telling his people right now on the camera in this service, what are you doing in this dark place? Why are you living like this? Why are you down and out? Why have you given up? Elijah started kind of bemoaning and he said, well, the reason I'm here is God, I don't believe you're with me anymore. And I'm the only prophet that you ever have. The people of Israel, they have broken covenant with you. They've killed the prophets. God, they're after me. Jezebel says if she can find me, she's going to kill me. I'm the only guy you got. And if they take me, you're done, God. God said, Elijah, what are you saying? I've got thousands of prophets that have not bowed their knee. They have not bowed their knee to bail. And and you're bailing out. That's what you're doing. But I got people that won't bail out. They've not bowed down to the bells. They are prophets. Get yourself up and get out of this cave. I've called you and put an assignment on your life. What you've got to realize. Now you said, why did you teach all of that? I want to show you something. Watch what the Word of God says. In verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and he did not rain on the earth for three and a half years. But you see this? The Bible says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a righteous man. The Bible says that Elijah was a righteous man. He is human just like you are we're human just like he is one minute I'm like him I'm just like Elijah one minute I'm on the mountain of God one minute I'm preaching in a church service and I feel the power of the Spirit of God and I leave feeling pretty good about it but then the next minute I'm in the cave down and out depressed ready to resign ready to quit want to go work at chick-fil-a and drink polynesian sauce i just want that's all i want to do i'm saying i'm done i don't want to do this how can you go from one minute on a mountaintop and down the next minute in a cave depressed giving up things ain't working out in your finances things ain't working out in your family church people may get upset you're done you're ready to quit you're through i want to tell you listen to this this is what why did elijah why did james call elijah a righteous man after hiding out in a cave after god answered by fire how why nowhere do you see james doesn't say and god said elijah was well he was an unbeliever he was a doubter he 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 he, he he's all over the place he's up and he's down no he called him a righteous man why because his righteousness wasn't dependent upon his behavior it was dependent upon what he believed what he believed and some of you are down and out right now but i want to tell you it's not based on your behavior it's based on what you believe today listen why was elijah righteous paul teaches in second corinthians 5 and tells us a verse i believe verse 17 somewhere along there maybe verse 21 tells us this it tells us he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god amen Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new for those who are Christ Jesus. It's not based upon your behavior right now. It's based on what you believe. God's not moving and calling you righteous by how you behave. Now, I'm not talking about practicing sin and being in outright rebellion. But I'm talking about the dad that brought his son to Jesus and said, Lord, my son, there's something wrong with him. He's having seizures and we can't fix it. And I took him to the disciples and they can't help him. What do I do? And the Lord said, I can heal him. Do you believe? And he said, I believe. But help my unbelief. That's behavioral. Up, down, up, down. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Is that am I talking to anybody right now? On the mountain, down in the cave, come out of the cave, get back on the mountain today. See, it's according to the righteousness of God in you. It's what you believe today. I want you to stand with me this morning and we're gonna we're gonna pray for people today and ask the Lord to move. God, please show up here today. Brad, I'm about to resign, I feel like it. I hope you've heard the word of God. I have felt, I have felt again that opposition. But it's what I believe. I want to call those of you that are on the prayer team. You know who you are. You've been asked to come out to the altar. My staff to please come out to the altar. And, and they're going to be here to pray with you right now.
They're going to be with you to pray. If you need prayer over your life today, I want, I want you to trust God. They're going to sing this song again. We're going to believe that Jesus is going to break chains today. This is a holy ground place. This is a holy moment. Don't miss this moment. Don't say, well, I'm not going to come down. These people are ready to pray when you can't pray. They have been preparing in prayer and being, being ready for this moment in time to pray with you today. You say, well, I don't want to go down there. That, that's a sign of weakness. <laughs> that's, I'm so weak. I'm weak. You're weak. He's strong. He's strong. But let some believers get around you. Because, you know, it may reverse. It may just reverse and Leo will have to have somebody to pray with her and for her one day. It may be bouncing Miss Connie who's happy and joyful. But there'll be a time, right, that she's not going to be able to pray. And she's going to need a Sheila to come in her life, a Kim, somebody out there to come into her life and pray. I didn't mention this in the first service, but I, a man came up to me in the 21 days of prayer. Been coming, He's new to the church, and he came up to me. I wish I'd have mentioned it. He was in the first service. He walked right over there. We stood right over there. And he said, Pastor, is there anything I can pray for you about? Kind of looked at him. That's, that startled me. I don't ever get those requests. And he looked at me. He said, you never, you never get that, do you? I know, because you're a pastor. You never get that. He said, what do you want me to pray with you about I told him I gave him some family stuff and he said then what can I pray for you about and I gave him a, a thing in my life that I'm praying about see I need prayer I need prayer I'm teaching on prayer but there I need prayer I'm no better than anybody else right Wayne I need prayer so don't hesitate come down for prayer let's sing this song we got a few moments will you we just join in right now Come if you need prayer today. Whatever you're facing today, turn around, guys. Begin to minister to the people. Come on, people will pray with you today. People will pray with you today. People will pray with you today. You don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to do this by yourself today. We'll pray with you today. We'll pray with you today. We'll train with everything lies healed hope is found right here and right now Jesus you change everything change they fall
God, as we join together in prayer, I cover this house in prayer. Those that are watching online, Lord, they're not here, but you're where they're at. You can minister to them by your word. Again, sending your word to minister and to heal. Somebody needs to come alive in faith. Somebody needs to come alive in Christ Jesus today. Whether watching online or again right here among us today, will you open your heart to the, to the will of God? Will you open your heart to the heart of God? God loves you with an incredible love, a, a love that will forgive you and cleanse you from all of your sin today. To those of you that are bound by sickness, as we pray for people today, Lord God, right now, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals today. You heal your people. You heal their minds today with anxiety and, and fear, Lord. The spirit of fear is seizing so many of us. Lord, the spirit of fear is hindering us. The Lord, the threats of, a, of evil, an evil empire, evil influences in our schools, in our culture. Everywhere we go, we're running into the spirit of Jezebel who threatens us and terrorizes us. But right now, Lord, we come against Satan's uh, 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 schematic plots against us as he's scheming against us. We pray against it. We pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will give us the power, the strength to overcome and to be able to, to put the enemy under our feet. You have given us all authority. I pray that over your people right now, that by your stripes they are healed in Jesus' name right now. I pray for the, the oil of the Holy Spirit to cover right now and fill up cups today, souls, hearts to overflowing right now. We come against Satan. We come against his works. We come against his plots. We come against his agenda today. We, we stand. You, tell, you told us in your word, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great mighty things. And Lord, we're calling on you, God, to do a great and mighty thing in our nation and our globe, Lord. Let the global pandemic now change and turn and shift to a global revival, God. Heal us, Lord, as we repent. You forgive us and you heal our lands, Lord. Heal our nation. Awaken our nations, God. We need one more awakening before you return back, Lord. May a revival, a reformation come to the church of Jesus Christ. May the truth of God prevail. It is the truth that sets us free today. That we walk in the spirit of freedom. We have been set free by the power of your word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb and overcomers through the word of our testimony today. We worship you, God, and I pray in Jesus' name that make it happen. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Listen. I don't want to be a better preacher. I don't want to be a better preacher. I used to spend my time trying to be a better preacher. I don't even want to be a better pastor anymore. Don't want to be that. 
I want to be better at praying. I want to be a better prayer, if that's how you can say it. I want to pray, pray, and pray, and pray so that I can become a better preacher, a better pastor. None of that works unless I pray better. I become better when I pray, amen. How many wants to be a better husband today? You want to be a better husband? How many wants to be a better wife today? You want to be a, how many wants to be a better son or a better daughter, a better church member? How many wants to be a better dream teamer, a better life group leader? If you want that, then learn how to pray better. You'll be better for it today. Amen. Go out there. Pray, pray, pray. God is moving in the land. Amen. God bless you. Everybody have a great day. Bless you today.